Hey everybody, welcome to Outdoors in the Northwest. This is video two on fishing for beginners. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about fishing line. I'm gonna go over what, what the difference is between main line and uh, leader line, uh, the differences between braid, monofilament, and fluorocarbon, and what pound test is. So main line and leader line. Your main line is the line that is on your spool, on your reel. And it will go all the way through all of the, the eyes on, on your rod. And here on my main line, I have a bobber. And then I have a swivel. And I'll talk a little bit more about terminal tackle in a later video. And then leading the main line is the leader line. At the end, you would have either a lure or a hook. This is just a hook so I can put bait on it. But your leader line is what's presented to the fish in the water. So when you go to cast, this is what sits in the water. It has your bait and your lure on it. A popular, a couple of popular setups for main line and leader line is to have a braided uh, leader line or a braided main line with a fluorocarbon leader. And another popular one is to have a monofilament main line with a fluorocarbon leader. The fluorocarbon leader is a popular setup because fluorocarbon is invisible and it's the part of the line that gets presented to the fish. So that all the fish sees is the hook or your, your, either your lure or your bait. They don't see the line. Uh, the reason why people don't use fluorocarbon for the whole setup is because fluorocarbon costs twice as much as monofilament. So to keep things on the cheap side, a lot of times people will use monofilament as the main line and then do a fluorocarbon leader. That way uh, you're spending twice as much money on, on the fluorocarbon, but uh, you're not using as much of it. So it doesn't cost quite so much money that way. Uh, so another, the other setup I was talking about was using braid as the main line. Braid is used for very specific situations, like if you're fishing in heavy cover for bass fishing and things like that. Uh, braided line also costs twice as much as monofilament. So if you don't need to use it, you really don't need to spend that kind of money on it, which is why monofilament is so popular. It's the line that's been around the longest. It's cheap. It has great castability. Uh, braided line, you have an increased chance of getting bird's nests, and that's where at the end of your, you really just get a big wad and tangle of, of line that's just giant knot, and that's, uh, you always want to avoid that. And as a beginner, you're kind of prone to it because you're just learning how everything works. Uh, monofilament has the least chances of getting bird's nest, so it's cheap, it's got great castability, and it really is the way to go. If you buy a rod and reel combination, it's gonna come already spooled with monofilament line. So as a beginner, if you're just starting out, uh, you know, monofilament line is the way to go. And a lot of people use this, even very experienced people. Uh, it's just that braid and fluorocarbon are just used for specific types of things and people tend not to wanna to use a whole lot of it because they're expensive. So that's a little bit about the, some of the differences between braid, fluorocarbon, and monofilament. There's a ton more and I can get into a lot of detail, but I will make uh, other videos in the future where I talk more in depth about the different types of techniques that you would fish for all these um, different types of line. So um, pound test, because no matter what, whenever you buy a line, you're always looking at the pound test. I talked about in video one, how uh, the first thing to do whenever you're fishing is think about where you're fishing and what you're fishing for, because that's gonna determine pound test line that you're going to need. So what pound test line is, uh, this for example is six pound test. And so if I took the end of this line and I pull on it, I could pull worth six pounds worth of force before it should break because it's rated for up to six pounds. So that's what that means is that it should be able to hold up to six pounds of force on the end of it before it breaks. Uh, there are plenty of people who have ran lots of different tests on different different brands of line. 
Uh, some people say that certain brands are just a lot better than others where like this is rated for six pounds, but if you ran a test on it, it might last up to 10 pounds or 15 pounds before it breaks. And there may be some brands that just hold up a lot better than others. And uh, you can always test those out for yourself. And there's plenty of other um, videos out there about that. But every line should hold up to at least what it's rated for. So how do you know what pound test line you need? Uh, that's where research comes in. Uh, certain fish are rated for certain, um, they have certain pound test lines. So like trout, for example, is about four to six pound test. But I do know that there's a lake in my area where you should use eight pound test because what the trout are eating in that lake makes them larger than what they are in other lakes. And that's why it's important to do your research on not just what you're fishing, but where you're fishing, just because of that certain, you know, that particular lake where that fish is bigger than they are in other places. Uh, so definitely do your research. And if you have any questions, you can always send me a message and let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Be sure to subscribe and check out uh, the rest of the videos. You can also uh, check me out on Facebook groups, Outdoors Woman Northwest. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for video three on reels.